I am going to watch all One Piece episodes in order. But if I yawn any time when watching, I have to give away two houses to a random subscriber. Okay, here we go. Episode one. Oi. What the hell are you I'm doing? doing the... Get off my computer, mate. Jesus, we talked about this the other day. But No the, more Mr. The, the, Beast style videos or I cancel your Crunchyroll subscription. Mm. What would your mother think of this? Do you think she'd be proud? Come here, champ. Give me the mic. Go back to your room and think about what you've done. Mm, okay. <sighs> Bloody hell. Sorry, Dad. Kids these days. Oh, what the hell? He's changed my wallpaper. What's this? The 1980s Astro Boy was one of the first anime I saw when I was younger. We had a bunch of episodes on VHS tapes and I watched them all the time. Given that the target demographic for the show was predominantly children, it's pretty easy to put two and two together on my viewpoint of the series. I hated it. It's the worst show ever. No, of, of course I loved it. He has butt guns, it's obvious I was eating that shit up. I got machine guns in my butt? I couldn't have said it better myself, Astro Boy, from the mediocre animated movie directed by David Bowers. You may have heard of him as the mastermind behind the Dire of a Wimpy Kid trilogy. Anyway, Astro Boy, also known as Mighty Adam, also known as Tetsuan Adam, was created by the late Osamu Tezuka. A guy not only known for strongly influencing the manga we view today, but also making a lot of weird shit. Look, it was a different time in the 50s. So despite Astro Boy being a kid show, it has a lot of questionable episodes. The pilot has our main character die in an automotive accident. To name a few more, there's the one with the giant rock face, the one with the transforming kid who becomes a cripple, the morbid Romeo and Juliet episode where it ends in them assimilating into a stationary living art exhibit. You get the gist? I could be here all day listing the entire show at this point. But the focus for today is one of the more memorable storylines. So memorable that 51 years later, a recreation was made. <laughs> Pluto is a rare occurrence of officially licensed fanfiction. A collaboration between Naoki Urasawa and Takashi Nagasaki resulted in the creation of a reimagining of the world's strongest robot arc from Astro Boy. The premise of the OG storyline is pretty simple to grasp. Very well then, I name you Bruton. I'll show you seven of the strongest robots in the world. This is Mont Blanc. This is Astro Boy. Now this is Molnar, and here is Brondo, next is Zeron, then there is Hercules, and last one is Fotar. Go, Bruton, and destroy them all. That is my command. Destroy them, Bruton, and you'll be the strongest robot in the world. Bruton is Pluto, just so you know. The 80s dub takes some liberties with localization, as you would expect from series around that time period. I rewatched the anime version and read the manga version for this video, and I gotta say the 80s depiction holds up as a way to watch the source material for Urasawa's adaptation. It doesn't really omit anything major other than a few story beats here and there, but the beauty of Pluto is that knowledge of the original isn't required to read it. I mean no knowledge at all. You could pick this up without knowing what an Astro Boy even is. Pluto is not one of those titles where it leaves you confused because apparently you had to read two books, four movies, one stage play, and a podcast for something that was advertised as standalone. Alongside this, Pluto as a reimagining of Tezuka's work succeeds on all fronts. That's something I find very important given the history of mediocre to terrible remakes. Remember Adam Wingard's Death Note adaptation? I wish I could erase it from my freaking brain. Not only does it fail to be a good movie on a technical level, it absolutely butchers the source material to the point of it being insulting. Even if you use the excuse of it trying to be its own thing, a reimagining should capture at least in some way the identity of the original. None of the themes or ideas that made Death Note shine are utilized. <laughs> コロシアという意味のキラーから来ているらしい。それは少し気に入らないが、僕はもう世界的にこのキラーになっている。キラー。キラー。What does that mean? It actually means light in Russian and Celtic. Well, wouldn't you be worried that they could just trace it back to you then
It also sort of means killer in Japanese. Satsujinsha. Sort of means killer in Japanese. All that's left is a stinky pile of rubbish that uses the recognition of the actual good series to garner any attention at all. It shouldn't have been made. In my opinion, the same can't be said for Pluto. You know when you rewatch something and realize you have misremembered how it goes in some way? Like a story beat or certain lines of dialogue are different. Only upon revisiting it, you realize the version in your head differs from reality. The inception of Pluto came about through this common phenomenon. Upon rereading the World's Strongest Robot arc, Urasawa noticed the details he remembered from the story weren't Tezuka's but his own. He thought the version of this storyline in his head was too good to pass up and tried pitching the idea to others, initially wanting someone else to adapt it. In an interview, Urasawa said, I said somebody ought to do something on the level of the greatest robot on Earth. Otherwise, the younger readers wouldn't get Tezuka's accomplishments. But I had no intention of doing it myself. Everybody told me I should do it, and I said, no, 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 no. Eventually, after many conversations with Nagasaki, they decided it couldn't be done by anyone else but themselves. So after a year of trying to get the rights to make an Astro Boy story, Makoto Tezuka gave the green light for Pluto as long as he promised not to imitate his father's work and make the story in his own style. One of the major ways it does this is by changing the main character from Astro to Gesicht, a German robot detective. He looks like this in the 80s anime and is called Zeron. A very golden looking man. Okay, enough of the lore dump. Is it any good? I think so. The characters are well written and expanded upon as it takes a slower pace. One of the criticisms I have with Tezuka's version is that there wasn't a lot of time to develop them and it wasn't spread out evenly. Since Pluto has enough content for 8 volumes, it makes sense that it has more time to give much needed depth to the cast. The art is the usual style that Naoki Urasawa draws in. That isn't a bad thing though, because I really like the way he draws, and it fits the more grounded storytelling. I was particularly impressed by the designs of the robots within Pluto. As mentioned before, one of the prerequisites for this manga to be made was not to copy the original. So all the main ensemble had to be redesigned, essentially. This is not an easy task, given how iconic Tezuka's designs are. You could very easily overcomplicate or go too far with the visuals, to the point where you have trouble recognizing what character they're supposed to be. But in this case, it's not a problem. They all look good and fit within the more realistic art style he usually goes for. I really don't want to talk about story elements that much, because I don't want to ruin it, but it's well written and it doesn't disappoint. When I read the ending, it was one of those moments where I was like, man, that was awesome. On that note, I'm going to talk spoilers. Go to this timestamp if you don't want them. Something I really liked was how the manga handled the scenes with Pluto. In the original, you see him all the time, debatably even more so than Astro Boy. Tezuka directly showcases the robot's brutality as he destroys his opponents one by one. It fits the more action-oriented narrative. But since the reimagining is a murder mystery, Urasawa changes Pluto into something more sinister. He takes a more horror-oriented approach, hiding the robot's appearance and only choosing to mark his arrival by the howling of his whirlwind the imposing horns, his glowing eyes. You see him arrive, and only the aftermath of the victims. Pluto doesn't feel like a robot. He feels like a force of nature, destroying anything and everything in his path. At a glance, it would be safe to assume that a series made for a younger audience when compared to the works of Urasawa would be outclassed when it comes to the portrayal of mature themes like existentialism, discrimination, and death. But upon closer inspection, it is quite obvious that Astro Boy, among other Tezuka works, tackle these ideas on a common occurrence. He may go about showing them in different ways, but the inclusion of these themes are definitely prevalent. When talking about the world's greatest robot story, Urasawa remarked, When I read that when I was about four, I felt like I had been told a very deep story, something meant for adults. I think everyone felt that way when they read it. It was never actually meant for kids. I wouldn't go so far in saying it wasn't made for kids, but there is definitely more death than your average episode of Play School. Goodbye, square window. We're looking through 
the diamond window today. So yeah, if you like Astro Boy or a good mystery thriller, why not give Pluto a try? Even if you know how the original plotline goes, there are so many surprises to experience, and honestly, if you liked Monster or 20th Century Boys, you're probably gonna like this. If you don't want to read it, there is an anime in production, but I have no idea when it's gonna come out. When researching various things for this video, I stumbled upon an article that made me shudder. In 2010, Universal Studios and a certain animation company acquired the rights from Tezuka Productions to adapt Pluto into a 3D CGI movie. I had to reread the sentence the first time I saw it because I thought I read it wrong. Illumination Entertainment. Fucking Illumination Entertainment, are you kidding me? All those scientists at NASA predicting an asteroid will kill us, or global warming will kill us, or literally anything else that'll kill us. No, 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 that's not going to be the end of the world. The end of the world will be if this film comes out. Comment below a series that you would hate to see Illumination Entertainment adapt. Since this technically goes under a video essay, I'm legally obliged to do a pretentious outro here, but between you and me, let's just pretend I did it, and I'm just gonna go, right? Just imagine some fucking... Wow, so inspirational. Right here. Alright, see ya. Astro, stay away!